Alrighty, here we are. We have made it to the wild card round, the super wild card round. Now we have three days to make up the six games. And boy, oh boy, do we have a bunch of treats. Five rematches, five, you know, games that, you know, are really going to be great. And one, you know, game that's really going to be great as well, you know, for me as a Cowboys fan. We'll talk about the Cowboys in a minute. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to be too biased here today. Um so up first tomorrow we got the Las Vegas Raiders going up against the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh boy. What a treat this is. You got Derek Carr hooking up mostly with Hunter Ritfro for the most part of the season. Like going up against uh Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, I mean T. Higgins. Joe Mixon. This is a Bengals team that is stacked. Bengals already beat the Raiders this year at one point, and it was not even close, you know. And I mean, the Raiders lucked out. They got they got to the playoffs. They they got there. They, they were able to make it. They won what they needed to do. They did what they needed to do, and they got there this year. They got there. They made it. They made it work. And. I think the key to sustaining the Raiders' playoff chances is the defense, you know. We saw, you know, last week against the Chargers, we saw, you know, at times, you know, the Raiders' defense just, it could not contain Justin Herbert. It, it couldn't, it, you know. Say what you will, you know, about the potential for a tie and everything like that. You can't, there's no ties here. If you win... You keep on going. If you lose, you're going home. Going right to the couch. So, Raiders need to get it together. They need to get it together. Keep things contained. Of course, you know, Cincinnati last week didn't really do too much. They they rested a bunch of their guys. You know, defense has been legitimate this year. A lot of people, you know, put this team off. Even I, you know, questioned them at one point. But here they are. They are, you know, the number... They are the number three seed in the playoffs, number three seed, you know, and it's and it's good stuff here. I mean, they could potentially, you know, get maybe one, maybe two home games. They already got one, so they could get another, you know, next week if that happens. I mean, again, this Bengals team has just superseded those expectations that they had because, you know, I mean, a lot of people were like, oh, well, you know, this, is, this team ain't going to do nothing, you know, with Joe Burrow. <laughs> You know, at the helm, you know, I mean, sure, he's back, but I mean, the year these two have had, I mean, especially Burrow and Chase, the year these two have had have been on point this year. Just an absolutely stupendous season by the Bengals. Can they keep this up, though, against the Raiders? We'll find out Saturday afternoon. And then Saturday night, we got round three Patri Patriots Bills, excuse me. Um,. So it's going to be Mac Jones versus Josh Allen, basically. Like, Josh Allen is the Bills' entire offense at this point. Just extremely one-dimensional. I mean, we've seen it throughout the entire season. We've seen some inexplicable nonsense for the Bills, too. So, you know, again, th this is the same Bills team that lost to the Jaguars and lost to the Patriots with only three passes thrown by Mac Jones. So... I don't know what the conditions are going to be like that this time up in Buffalo, but I mean, this time around, um, you know, the Patriots, you know, they're, they're looking to hungry, you know. Mac Jones, you know, rookie quarterback, he, he's looking to prove himself in the playoffs. And Coach Belichick, he's still, he's still coaching at a high level. And the Patriots defense is on point this year. It's been on point all season long. But it especially has been on point these past two months or so. I mean, a lot of people put the Patriots dead in the water at one point, you know. Because, I mean, they didn't have the greatest start either. But, I mean, they they started rolling. And once they started rolling, they never looked back. And the Bills, somebody else is going to have to get involved. Somebody else is going to have to get involved for the Bills. That, that's really the key to this game. If somebody else doesn't get involved, it's going to be a long, long night. So, we'll see. And then Sunday, we have a triple header of beautiful games here. You got Jalen Hurts, the Philadelphia Eagles, going up against Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, 
unlike last year where we had really one team that was a fraud, and that was the Chicago Bears, you know, this year we have two. I don't really see the Eagles getting very far. I mean, sure, they have the number one rushing offense in the NFL, but they're going against it's Tom Brady, the number one passing offense in the NFL. You know, Scott Grog, you know, and Mike Evans, but, uh, but no Godwin, you know, somebody else, <laughs> somebody else on, on this Buccaneers wide receiving core has to step up since, you know, the receiving core has been kind of messed up. You know, Antonio Brown, drama too. Yeah, go, go check out that latest um, indoor football update if you missed that a couple days ago. So the Eagles and the Buccaneers, again, this is just two teams of completely different styles here. You got, again, number one rush offense versus number one pass offense. This is going to be real intriguing, you know. So we'll see what the Bucs can do. We'll see what the Eagles can do. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not confident on the Eagles, though. I mean, again, you know, the Eagles... <laughs> They didn't look sure they had their second stringers out, but the first time, you know, I mean, I mean, the last couple times they played, you know, you know, top tier teams, they haven't fared too well. I mean, again, the Bucks already beat the Eagles at one point this season. It was a close game though, but it was a close game. But that was early in the season. This is January football now. This is, this is not, you know, early October, September football. This is January football, and Tom Brady thrives. In January football, and of course you know, of course you know this Bucks defense is stacked, loaded. JPP, B to Bay. I mean, just, I mean, there's just guys. This whole entire defense, you know, despite the fact that it's been injured to hell and back throughout the season, and it, and the cornerbacks issue has been a thing all season long, in my opinion. But that's just me, you know. But the Bucks held serve. That's why they got the number two seed in. The NFC. That's why they got the number two seed. They held serve. They did what they needed to do, which was win, win, win. You know, on that on that passing attack, and you know, defense coming up clutch in situations like this. The Eagles again, you know, feast on you know, the Giants and the football team and you know, teams like that. You know, to get to where they are. So I think this team is definitely not it. But we'll, we'll, we'll be surprised if the Eagles do beat the Bucks Sunday. We'll see. And then, you know, an old, old rivalry gets renewed in the playoffs. Oh boy, Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers come to Big D to take on Dak, Zeke, and the Cowboys. Oh boy, this is gonna be this is gonna be one hell of a matchup. I'll tell you that right right now. I'll tell you that right now. You got You got one of the Bosa brothers out there. You you got George Kittle, you got Debo Samuel, especially, who's been just on a tear these past few weeks. You know, and the Cowboys' defenses, that they are no slouch anymore. This is not the worst-rated defense in the NFL anymore. No, 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 no. Trevon Diggs, Michael Parsons, Randy Gregory. I mean, this is a stacked, you know, Cowboys unit, a stacked 49ers unit, especially on defense, too. You know, just a solid bunch. The real question is, is can the Cowboys get out of their rut yeah, you, you beat the Eagles with 50 points, but this is the second string Eagles. You, you can't do that in the playoffs. There's no second stringers playing. I'm sorry, Dak. I'm sorry, Coach McCarthy. There's no there's no second stringers playing. I'm sorry. And the 49ers, I think the real question here is Jimmy Garoppolo. That, that's really the only question, you know. Can Jimmy Garoppolo do it? I mean, he's serviceable, but can he... You know, get back to that Super Bowl, you know, run that he had, you know, a couple just a couple years ago. I mean, this was just a couple years ago. The 49ers were in the Super Bowl. Remember that. Uh, this is going to be real intriguing. If you're watching on Nickelodeon, good luck to you. Good luck to you. Who, whoever gets the slime MVP, uh, let me know. Let me know. <laughs> let me know, man. Let me know because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, you know, I, I might honestly just look at that Nickelodeon telecast just cause, but you know the slime game. Yeah, we get that. That is that is good stuff. The real fraud here as we shift over into late Sunday night. Oh boy, Steelers. I I don't know how the Pittsburgh Steelers got to this point with Big Ben. You know, an aging Big Ben, a offensive line that you know is just I I I can't. I, I can't get, I can't seem to understand why you know defense not that great either. I mean you got you got T.J. Watt, 
that's about it, you know? That's about it. You know? Steelers fans, where you at? I, 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 know, I, know we're, I know we're gonna get guys like, you know, you Trier or Chisel the Dottis, you know, all up on here, you know, talking about Steelers going to the Super Bowl based off of luck and stuff like that. But honestly, I just don't see the Steelers getting very far again. This is another, t this is the other team that I don't think is getting very far again. This, I, I just don't see this team, you know, especially with the Chiefs whipped them last month. And I mean, that was one of the worst games I've seen in my entire life, you know, involving the Steelers. I mean, I've seen some Steeler beatdowns, but this one, this one was bad. And we all know the Chiefs story by now. The Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes under center. A a team that was lost, you know, the first two months of the season. They were like, what, three and four at one point? And here they come, you know, running into the postseason. We're talking running into the postseason on a winning streak with an offense that's got it together with Tariq Hill, Travis Kelsey. I mean, there, there's just so many weapons. You know, Nicole Hartman. I mean, again, this is just a stacked Chiefs offense. Of course, you know, the defense is also stacked as well. I mean, this is a Chiefs unit, you know, with, you know, sure we like to, sure we like to joke about Dirty Dan Swords and sometimes, you know, Tyron Matthew as well, the Honey Badger, Frank Clark. I mean, this is just a Chiefs Chiefs defense that is legitimate. They they can get it done. You know they just didn't get it together the first couple weeks. And that was the problem. But they got it together. They finally got it together, and it's working at the right time again. The Chiefs are looking to become the new Patriots, the kings of January football, and they could continue that if they beat the Steelers Sunday night, and then Monday night, round three of Cardinals Rams. Now. Whew, this was well, this was an inter this is an interesting one because you got Cliff Kingsbury going up with Sean Bay. You got Matthew Stafford who's been inconsistent the past few weeks going up against Kyler Murray who's also been inconsistent the last few weeks. A couple of, you know there's been a couple of games here and there you know where you know Murray's played serviceable you know pretty well against my Dallas Cowboys especially, uh, but other times not so much. You know getting blown up by the Lions that that is a big one. Um, J.J. Watt could be coming back, so, you know, we could be seeing both the Watt brothers, you know, this weekend, and we'll, we'll see, we'll see, you know, how that goes, I believe he might be coming back, I'm not sure yet, we'll talk about all that, you know, once we get to the recap on Monday night, the Rams, on the other hand, they got, they got, they, they have all, they've added pieces, they've added pieces, the problem is just, you know, what is Matthew Stafford gonna do, I think, I think we've all been thinking that throughout the week, I know, you know, if you see the other videos and stuff like that, you know, what is Matthew Stafford going to do? Because, I mean, he's thrown some baffling interceptions that I'm just, I, I, my mouth was just wide open at some of these interceptions that he's thrown over the past few weeks. My, 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 like, that pick six a couple of weeks ago, I was just like, I was just like, what? Well, how? How? How can he do that? He threw it straight to him. He can't have this again. And we all know the Rams, you know, they got talent all over the place. I mean, man, Jefferson's been doing things. Cooper Cup is number one, you know, in you know, like he he's got what damn near two thousand yards receiving, over a hundred catches, over ten touchdowns. I mean, just unreal. OVJ, you know, he's been, you know, reborn as a LA Ram. And then, you know, the Rams made moves on defense. I mean, this is a unit that already had Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. But then they added Eric Weddle. Then they, you know, they also added Bond Miller during the season. But they added Eric Weddle this week, you know, because of the safety depth. I mean, the Rams, you know, say what you will. If this team doesn't make the Super Bowl this year, I, I just don't know. Like, I, I really don't know. Like, this, this is a team that is definitely built for Super Bowl. But I think, you know, again... You know, the same problems that played the Rams during the season, or at least the latter portion of the season, you know. You know, the, the real problem of the last portion of the season was Matthew Stafford throwing the picks and stuff like that. You can't throw the picks, brother. You know, and the defense at times, you know, just, they, I mean, they, they couldn't stop a brick wall, you know, at times. I mean, the 49ers were gashing them <laughs> at, at several different angles. I mean, you, I, I, I think, you know, if the Rams want to go to the Super Bowl and everything, they got to have a complete, complete game. Because, I mean, the 
Rams, the Ravens, or rather the Ravens, the 49ers, you know, they were just all running all over the Rams the past couple weeks. And we'll see, you know, who gets to face the Tennessee Titans and the Green Bay Packers, whoever is the, uh, what, either the highest or the lowest seed remaining. I believe that's the lowest seed remaining. I, I forgot my playoff rules already. We're not going to really talk about Tennessee Green Bay this week. We'll talk about them next week in the divisional round. So, you know, that is going to pretty much do it here. Uh, I hope you all have a good rest of your night. We're going to get all that out of here. We're going to skid out of them. We're going to talk about the NBA and then talk about college basketball and then come back Monday night talk about the wild card round and recap all that so it's going to be a busy busy weekend for you all and continue to subscribe continue to like share comment subscribe and do all that good stuff you know just keep on doing what you do guys you know i uh, really appreciate it so i'll see you again you know very very soon with the nba and college basketball and then you know recapping the wild card baby see you soon